Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. I am Adara and today we are going to Rio de Janeiro. Are you excited? If you've been following along with my channel, then you know I recently went to Brazil and had the trip of a lifetime. It included a quickie trip over to Rio de Janeiro, which I had never been to before. In today's travel vlog, I'm gonna be sharing my time in Rio de Janeiro with you, but during this trip, I also went to Fortaleza and Changua. So make sure to check out those videos, subscribe, like a few things, and relax. Take a load off, envision yourself in Brazil. Let's get into the Rio de Janeiro travel vlog. Accompanying me on this trip to Rio are my lovely mother and my beautiful cousin Natasha. Natasha acted as our tour guide on this trip and I owe her one million thank yous for showing us all the beautiful places we're about to see. She's a super popular influencer in Brazil and if you wanna see what she's up to, you can find her on Instagram at Natasha Denise underscore. Rio de Janeiro is located on the southeastern coast of Brazil, and it's the capital of the state by the same name. It's the city with the second largest population in Brazil, and it's a great spot for tourists because there's so much history here, as you'll soon see. Because we've just flown in on empty stomachs, our first stop in Rio is at Belmond Copacabana Palace for brunch. Bom dia. This hotel, you guessed it, is located just off the famous Copacabana Beach. It's been around since 1923, and it's well known for being a locale where you can spot celebrities enjoying some R&R. &R. Some famous guests have included Paul McCartney, Madonna, Princess Diana, and Justin Bieber, just to name a few. And with a pool like this, I am not surprised. Although we aren't staying at this luxurious hotel, my cousin pulled a few strings and was able to get us a reservation at the extremely popular restaurant where they serve a stunning brunch buffet. The food was so tasty, I wish I could eat here every week. The highlights for me were the pastries, of which my favorite were the guava and cheese croissant and the pistachio cruffin. Next, it was time to check into our hotel. We stayed at the Rio Orthome Palace. We decided to pay a small fee to upgrade our room to an ocean view, and let me tell you, it was worth it. This hotel also has a great breakfast buffet and a rooftop pool, which I'll show you a bit later. We decided to spend this cloudy afternoon hitting up a few spots that don't require good weather. Here we are at the Botanical Garden of Rio de Janeiro. This garden was founded in 1808 by King John VI. It features 137 acres of Brazilian and exotic flora, 55 of which are open to the public. There are over 8,000 species of plant life here, including these gorgeous royal palms, which are a well-known marker of these gardens. The Orchidarium is a great place to stop to check out some award-winning orchids. And make sure you look up in the trees as you walk because you just might spot some monkeys. Just kidding, you will absolutely spot monkeys. There were so many of them. These two were my favorites. Hold the phone, we found chocolate popcorn. This is Pipaca do Seu Roberto, and it was amazing. We opted for condensed milk on top, and it was the way to go. A must try if you spot it in Rio. Como é? Mm. Muito boa. Permita. After a short drive, it was time for some shopping. We're here at the Shopping Leblon, a beautiful mall in Rio. This mall features almost 200 stores, so you're sure to find something great to take home. Mm -hmm. 
I had been searching every Havaiana store for these cute sneakers in my size and I finally found them here. Although I've never seen a sale at Zara in the US, this Zara was having a huge sale. Fancy a fashion show? Time for more food! We decided on dinner at Posi, an Italian-esque restaurant with charming lights and lemons on the ceiling. We shared some delicious burrata and caprese with focaccia bread for an app. For dinner, Natasha tried the ravioli, my mom had the polenta, and I tried the octopus carbonara, which looks weird, but was actually pretty good. We're about to head to bed, but here's another glimpse of our hotel's view of Copacabana Beach at night. Bon dia! Let's grab some breakfast at the hotel. They had a great buffet-style breakfast with sweet and savory items, my favorite of which was the kanjika corn soup with cinnamon. Today we're walking around to some cool tourist stops downtown. This is the Museo du Amaya, or the Museum of Tomorrow. This is a science museum that promotes the exploration, reflection, and planning of possibilities for the future. Unfortunately, it was closed the day we were there, but it's still lovely to appreciate from the outside as it sits along Rio's port area. Next up, we're visiting the Igreja de São Francisco. This Roman Catholic church was built in the 18th century, and along with being one of Brazil's oldest churches, it's also one of the most beautiful, with its ornate gold interior. While you're here, don't forget to thank the powers that be for your awesome trip to Rio. I spent a lot of time popping into Starbucks while I was in Brazil, and although I know that sounds like a waste of time for someone from Seattle, the literal birthplace of Starbucks, I was on the hunt for the coveted Rio de Janeiro Been There mug. Unfortunately, the city was out of them, but it was still interesting to see what they offered food and beverage-wise since it varies by country. A few notable differences were the chicken cones, the pound de queijo, the croque monsieur sandwich, and the brigadeiro latte. Here's a glimpse of the brigadeiro latte with a chicken cone, or conchinha, that I grabbed for a snack. Right across the street from the Starbucks was the Biblioteca Nacional, or the National Library of Brazil. It's one of the largest libraries in the world, and my mom informed me that my dad would come here to study back when he spent some time in Rio. They do offer free guided tours, but we just walked around and admired the architecture and displays. Don't forget to step out onto the deck before you leave to catch a stunning view of the city center. A few more historical sites to glimpse in the area are the beautiful Municipal Theater, where you can still watch a ballet or symphony on certain days, and the Arcos da Lapa, which is an 18th century aqueduct which brought fresh water to the city. It now serves as the bridge for the Santa Teresa Tramway. We took a quick cab ride over to the Escadaria Celadon, a fantastic spot for a photo op. This vibrant mosaic staircase is the artwork of Chilean-born artist George Celadon. He began adding these colorful tiles to the worn-down steps in front of his home in 1990. The project became his passion, and although he didn't have much, he sold paintings to fund his staircase piece until it was eventually completely covered by tiles, mirrors, and ceramic. He constantly changed things around, adding in tiles that were brought to him from people all over the world until his death in 2013, which unfortunately occurred right here on these very steps that he had spent over 20 years creating. 
Not too far away is the Confeitaria Colombo, an elegant cafe that will leave you feeling like you've time traveled to 1894, the year that this cafe was founded. It's a great place to grab coffee or some breakfast, but it's well known for its pastels or fried pastries. These savory pastries are filled with different kinds of meat or cheese, but if you have a sweet tooth, their desserts range from cakes to tarts to eclairs. We tried out the shrimp pastel, the lemon tart, the pistachio eclair, and some bacalhau croquettes. While editing this video, I am disappointed in myself for not ordering more things to try. Guess I'll just have to book another flight to Rio, eh? We had just enough time for a quick stroll along Copacabana Beach before heading to dinner. The boardwalk is a great place to grab a drink or hunt for handcrafted souvenirs, like these accessories made from local caipim dourado or golden grass. We are rounding out our evening with some Brazilian-Asian fusion at Mr. Lamb. This moody restaurant is featured in the Michelin Guide because of its incredibly tasty Chinese cuisine. We started off with a Manhattan and Moscow mule, which were a bit different than I expected. Yeah, yeah. The is here. A different. A different. Whiskey, um. Campari, Vermouth. Um, it's vodka, uh, ginger beer, ginger beer, ginger beer, and um, uh, lime. Lemon. Lemon. Ashkasol. And what's this? Because I don't think that a Moscow mule in the States comes with spuma. Mm -hmm. Spuma. Foam. Foam. I don't think that Moscow mules in the United States come with foam, but I haven't had that many, so maybe I'm wrong. It's very good. Um, <laughs> it's better for the spoon. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm. <laughs> No. Essa parte aqui é boa. É. It tastes like um, lemonade. Uh, lemonade? Lemonada. Sim. É bem diferente. But it's com vodka. É muito yeah. bom. Mm. Mas também eu acho a bebida aqui tá fraca. I think the drinks here are really weak. <laughs> Sim. <laughs> Instead of fussing around with another weird cocktail, I went straight for the whiskey. Chivas is a popular brand in Brazil, and if you want a whiskey neat, it's fittingly called a whiskey cowboy. Some little towels to clean our hands before we eat. We tried the chicken saute, which was hands down our favorite. We even ordered more sauce. Some spring rolls, the filet mignon with the shrimp fried rice, and for dessert, this astounding un eggy a coconut and passion fruit concoction designed to look like a sunny side up egg. Today we're doing a few things that you simply must do when visiting Rio. The first is trekking up Corcovado Mountain to see Cristo Redentor, or Christ the Redeemer. To get up the mountain, you take a tram. My mom and I were a bit nervous about the steep ascent, but in my opinion, the view is worth it. Cristo Redentor is one of the new seven wonders of the world. It's an Art Deco statue of Jesus that stands 30 meters high on top of Corcovado Mountain, which is in the Tijuca National Park. It was built between 1922 and 1931, and boy, is it beautiful. Just a heads up, it's super crowded up here. It's like everybody wants to take their picture with Jesus or something, including us. Hey, Jesus. From this lookout point, you get a killer view of Rio and the surrounding ocean. The other great tourist spot to hit up while in Rio is Pão de Açúcar, Sugarloaf Mountain. To get to the top, we'll have to take a ride on the cableway. Well, two rides actually, as the first cable car, or Bonjinho, drops you off on a shorter mountain called Moro da Urca. At this first stop, make sure to walk around and take in the stunning views of the city.
At this stop, you can also catch a viewing of a film about the origins of Pangiasuka, grab a tasty treat, drink a few caipirinhas, or take a cool selfie with the main attraction in the background before heading up. Sugarloaf is named as such because it's shaped like the loaves of sugar that were sold until the late 19th century before granulated or cube sugars were produced. The cableway was originally built in 1912, although it has since been updated, don't worry. The new cable cars provide a 360 view through their glass windows, and it is a view worth taking in. Y'all, the first thing you'll notice when you get off the Bonjinho is the smell of caramelizing nuts. This is nutty Bavarian, and you won't be able to resist them. This is a chain in Brazil. They sell, you guessed it, glazed nuts. They will also let you sample all the flavors. My favorite were the cashews. They are delicious and the perfect snack to walk with as you look for the best spot to take photos. Trust me. There was a little bit of sun left, so we threw on our bikinis and headed to Ipanema Beach. Ipanema Beach is located between Copacabana and Leblon beaches, and it's a super chill environment with two mountains fittingly named Dois Irmãos, or Two Brothers, as a lovely backdrop. Chairs and umbrellas are available to rent on the beach for a small fee, and drinks, both virgin and alcoholic, are readily available. Although it was a bit too cold to swim, we grabbed some drinks, took some great photos, collected seashells, and watched the sun go down. When we could no longer deny our hunger, we wandered over to Boteca Belmont. This is a large restaurant facing Ipanema Beach. The interior is pretty and they have a fairly large menu. We opted to dine upstairs on the open deck. For dinner, we ordered the caldo du feijoada, some different types of pastels, and the picanha with macaxeira. The meat was pretty tough, so they made us another order, which was a little better, but I think the pastels are the way to go at this restaurant. This one was shrimp, this one's carne du sol, and here's ground beef. The feijoada was delicious as well and reminded me of the way my mom makes it, but soupier. As for drinks, Natasha ordered another masca muli and I made the mistake of ordering a Bloody Mary. I have made this mistake in Brazil before, but I thought they may have finally figured it out. Turns out they haven't. This tasted like straight bland tomato juice with lots of Tabasco. I couldn't taste any vodka, but I'm assuming there was a little bit in there somewhere. All in all, a day worthy of a great night's sleep. The next day was our last day in Rio, and we decided to spend what little time we had left at Copacabana Beach. We stopped by a small market around the corner from our hotel to pick up a few snacks. Then moseyed across the street to the ocean. Travelers, beware. Pedestrians do not have the right of way in Brazil. If you think a car will slow down because you're at a corner waiting to cross the street, you are wrong. So be cautious. When you hang it on the beaches of Brazil, you will most likely have vendors come up to sell all kinds of things, from swim cover-ups to sunglasses to shrimp. It can get pretty annoying at times with vendors coming up to you every minute or so. But in my experience, they were all very polite, and if I said no, they would walk away. I could have stayed out here all day, but alas, it was time for our Rio journey to come to an end. We said goodbye to the beach, to our hotel's fantastic view, to the pool that we never used, whoops, and jumped into a cab to head to the airport. For a pre-flight snack, we grabbed McDonald's, conveniently located at the airport, and y'all, they had deep fried banana pies. 
Apparently this is a big deal on the interwebs, so let me indulge you. McDonald's in the US stopped deep frying their pies in 1992 and opted for a <coughs> healthier, baked version. Ever since, Americans have been longing for the bubbly deep fried goodness of years past. On occasion, you can still find deep fried pies in other countries or in Hawaii, but I felt like I'd hit the jackpot to find the banana flavor, which is one of my favorite dessert flavors and one that I feel like we don't take advantage of enough in the States. It was so good. Definitely try one of these if you're ever in Brazil. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me in Rio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out some of my other travel vlogs. Bye everyone!